Hey, hey, welcome to Advancing AI, brought to you by Advancing Analytics. So if you're passionate about AI, machine learning, MLOps, or even LLM ops, then you're in the right place. Today, we've got something very special lined up for you. Today, we're going to be diving into the world of MLOps. Typically, you'd have Simon, along with myself, talking about everything to do with AI and machine learning. Simon has had a really busy week at SQL Bits this week, and he's away celebrating his very special day. He's, he's had his birthday yesterday, so he's away celebrating his special day. However, we're really, really lucky today to be joined by the author of MLOps Gym, who's Sappy from Databricks. So if you're looking to move your machine learning projects from the very early stages of experimentation right through production where you're going to get streamlined success, then you want to make sure you stick around. Now, don't forget, if you like content like this and you want to hear more, hit that subscribe button and make sure you click on that notification bell to make sure you never miss out on any future sessions. Let's jump straight in. Hi, Gabby. Hi, everyone. Excited to be here. Tell me a bit about yourself and introduce yourself for us, please. Thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Seppi. I'm a senior specialist at Databricks. I've been with the company for a bit over three and a half years. Yeah. Um, I started my career actually in uh, software development, like probably many of the people in your audience. Yeah. Uh, and the more I worked in this field, uh, the more I got drawn towards data. So I yeah. always, um, I was trying to bring more data into my software development projects. And then at some point I realized, oh, this is the topic I'm passionate about. Yeah. I got curious about data science. And I started watching videos like this one. I started reading books, taking courses, and slowly transitioned into data science. Uh, and I was practicing data science for a while. So um, I was basically data scientist slash ML engineer, different roles that I had. And then I joined Databricks as a specialist. Lovely. Um, so today we're going to be talking about the blog series that you're working on. I'm going to share the blog series now as well, but for the viewers, I'll also put a link to the blog series down below. Uh, so talk, talk me about, you know, what, 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 why did you write about machine learning operations, Jim, or MLOps, Jim? And from my perspective, right, as a consultancy here at Advancing Analytics, we help clients in terms of transitioning the machine learning projects from just playing around, trying to figure out what's the best machine learning models so from, from your experimental stage, really, right to production level. But we know, right, nearly 90% of machine learning projects fail to ever make it to production. And that, for me, all boils down to making sure you have your MLOps framework and making sure that it's established in an in a organization or business. And, and it was for, for me, when I saw your blog series, it just absolutely made sense. But talk us through in terms of what inspired you to write that series from you know, your perspective, really, your opinion about what inspired you. Well, uh, that's an interesting point you mentioned about many of these um, machine learning projects failing, right? One of the, maybe they're not failing, but they're not necessarily uh, moving to production and uh, being used across the business. Uh, so the, the top re reason for that is um, that the businesses, they're not sure about the quality of machine learning projects. Uh, yeah. That means they're not sure if they put this ML model into production and then they use it for their business, for their customers and so on. Uh, first of all, it, it creates good results, correct results. And also, it sticks to uh, compliance um, needs of the company. So that, that's the first problem that MLOps actually um, addresses. The other one is about automation. How can yeah. you create models and how, how can you create ML solutions that um, with, with, the, with the least cost, right? That, that's, yeah. that's, all the, that's what all of us want. Uh, so you have to automate as much of the process as possible rather than having things running manually, moving models from one place to, to another by kind of creating different objects and moving them and so on. So yeah, yeah. that's the second point about 
ML Ops, and that is why we wanted to have this series. So we introduced our customers, our users, to best yeah. practices, how to take their models, their, let's say, simpler ML practices, all yeah. the way through the ML Ops journey to where they have uh, the best quality for their models and they have the maximum automation in their ML uh, lifecycle. Okay, that's that's brilliant. I mean, I I read your series, and I'm looking forward to all the next blog series that you bring up. Tell me a bit about you know I've, I found it really intriguing that you've got called the crawl, walk, and run phases. Tell me a bit about you know why have you broken it down to those particular phases, and whether you know does it have to be done sequentially? Could you do, for example, the run before the walk? Probably doesn't make sense by the way you've uh, defined it, but go ahead and, and talk talk us through. You know, what, why have you come up with those phases? So that's a great question. First, uh, let me tell you what crawl, walk, and run are. So crawl is about building uh, the foundation for repeatable workflows. That means if you have a few notebooks that you actually use to train your models and then probably you take your models and run some inference manually, we want you to learn how to uh, put automation around this how to set up uh, your data, how to set up your Unity catalog, how to use MLflow and so on. So you have repeatable workflows rather than manual ones. Then the walk phase is about introducing CI CD, right? How to test your code, how to test your models, uh, how to automate further. Uh, for example, how to convert your um, notebooks into projects, into Python projects if you're using Python, for example. And the third uh, stage, which is run, is about introducing or adding rigor and quality, right? right. Are your models explainable? Do you have uh, visibility over end-to-end -end lineage of your models? Um, can you bind your uh, machine learning projects to business results? So these are the type of topics that we discuss in the run. And uh, going to your question about whether people need to do it sequentially or not, yeah. Well, you don't need to start from the beginning. Depending on where you are in your machine learning journey, um, you can always find practices in our blog series that will help you to move to the next stage. Obviously, this is a evolving journey, right? Like no yeah. one can say, I've, I've mastered them a lot. There's nothing better that I can do. No, oh, that's good to know. Okay, I mean, so when you talk about MLOps resources, there's just tons and tons of resources out there, you know, when you do a search um, to try and get started with MLOps best practices. I wanted your opinion in terms of what makes this blog series stand out to every other course out there, Sabi. Um, so this is specific to Databricks. Um, it, it, it's different than everything out there because uh, we are not looking at it in a generic sense, but how to practice on the practice it on Databricks. And it also comes from a group of experts who have been practicing MLOps on Databricks with like hundreds of customers that we work with. And we're bringing those directly to you. And if I could kind of um, talk to every customer of mine, I would tell them, please, please read these uh, points. There are simple steps that you can take to really improve uh, a lot. So with doing little, you can gain a lot in terms of improving your uh, maturity. Yeah, that sounds that, that sounds good. Right? Solid advice as well in terms of uh, oh well, I guess why 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 this stands out to other uh, resources that are out there. Um, I'm very intrigued as well. Why why have you called it MLOps Gym? <laughs> that's a, that's a good question. So crawl, walk, run. So yeah. exercise MLOps. That's why it's called MLOps gym. I don't know who crawls in the gym, but <laughs> <laughs> well, you might you might be crawling, but it's gonna, you're gonna have very achy knees, I, I presume, by doing <laughs> crawling in the gym. Okay, cool. I mean, I, I certainly like those definitions of crawl, walk, uh, and run. When can we expect the next blog series then? So we're gonna um, publish. Uh, a blog every week or every other week. Yeah. Uh, the next one that is coming up is about MLflow. 
So okay. beginner's guide to ML flow, you can expect it in a couple of weeks um, and we'll share it with you. So Emma, is it fair to say that this is just a warm up session and to expect tons more of blogs and resources to back the whole MLOps process with, within Databricks? Definitely. So we have tens of blog posts in the pipeline. Um, so you can expect a few months of content coming out uh, in weekly or bi-weekly manner. Yeah. Brilliant. Sounds good. Sapi, would you mind if I shared your details down below so that if people have specific questions about MLOps and how you do that in Databricks further to the blogs and video, can they reach out to you? By all means, yes. Go for it. Good stuff. I mean, this sounds exciting. I'm certainly looking forward uh, to the next blog. And if you're as excited as we are in terms of transforming your machine learning projects from experiment to experimentation to production, then hit the subscribe button, hit the like and subscribe button, and stay tuned for more blogs and videos. Amazing. Bye for now. Bye.